We want to talk to you about Vega today, about the team and about what we want to do um, in the future with, with Vega and the technologies that we're developing. All right, so uh, really quickly, Vega means uh, in Sinhalese speed, Vega in Yanage. So uh, we, we wanted to build a high performance uh, supercar. Um, that was about two years ago. All right, so this was a picture taken two years ago, about uh, roughly about two years ago. Uh, this was um, because we didn't have a space by then, Trace Expert City was not open. So we started some of our work uh, at our uh, home garage. Uh, so this was, um, uh, we built a Lotus chassis at first, it's a Lotus 7 chassis from the 1970s to get a rough idea about, you know, building a space frame chassis and, and the dynamics of that. Uh, so this was our, uh, you know, uh, humble beginnings uh, two years ago. Um, then, um, a few days later, uh, we developed, uh, we, we were just bored, we made a small YouTube video about uh, Vega and, and we uh, really didn't know much about uh, building a car or how, much, how long it would take, so we kind of put this video together. So that was two years ago. Um, what you don't see in the last few frames is that we, uh, <laughs> we committed to a, a date of building the car in one year, one year, uh, because we really didn't know, uh, <laughs> you know what kind of uh, challenges we'll, we will face. And, and really, even now, we will put very aggressive goals in front of us so that we really push ourselves to, to innovate and, and to do things that uh, the, you know, the rest of the world isn't doing, that we could do it quicker with the resources that we have uh, in Sri Lanka. All right, so simply our uh, objective is to build a, a world-class, high-performance, all-electric supercar right here in Sri Lanka for the first time, for the first time ground up. Uh, so this is our number one task. Um, when we started this about two years ago, uh, there were many ideas. Uh, um, you know, Harsha wanted to do something uh, new new for Kojin and new for Sri Lanka that uh, was never done before. Uh, so we looked at a number of things, a car, you know, other devices and electronics and so on as to what we really wanted to do. Uh, a car is something that everybody can connect to, everybody uses some method of transport. Um, and, and a supercar, uh, you know, a sports car is something that people can easily connect with uh, and, and there's a lot of technology. Uh, a lot of multidisciplinaries come together, uh, mechanical engineering, electronics, electrical, uh, materials, chemistry for batteries and um, you know, other materials for the car and so on. So uh, a vehicle is an ideal place to uh, do a lot of innovation uh, that uh, majority of the world uses. All right, so um, we have three goals in our project with the, the Vega prototype that we're building. One is to do zero to 100 kilometers per hour under uh, in 3.1 seconds, uh, or 3.6 seconds, um, a top speed of 240 kilometers per hour, and a range of 240 kilometers per electric charge. So um, if you look at the Nissan Leafs today, 
uh, you know, once you charge the vehicle, you can do about 150 to 180 kilometers. So this is also a complete electric car. There is no petrol tank or uh, engine or combustible engine. So once you charge, uh, we, we want it to go uh, 240 kilometers per, per charge. All right. So. Uh, um, I, I want to stay on this slide a lot longer than the, the rest. So this is our team. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, eight full-time employees. Um, that's part of this team. Um, we have a, a material engineer, uh, two mechanical engineers, two electrical engineers, and, and uh, about two electronics and a program manager. Uh, so this is how we uh, yeah, kind of, uh, you know, set ourselves up. Apart from this team, we have a number of uh, student interns and trainees who, who are part of our project. Uh, right now, we have 23 from about six different universities. We had, uh, we had the honor of uh, you know, some of your WSO2 employees doing their sabbatical with us, uh, which was an you know, awesome uh, experience. So thank you, Assis. Um, uh, so really, you know, a lot of people, when they talk about Vega, or you know, they say, "Oh, this this guy from Intel um, came here, you know, two years ago to work on the car, and so on, so on, so forth." But really, um, this project is done by ordinary, you know, Sri Lankan, uh, you know, youngsters who have done extraordinarily well in their studies and and uh, at their universities, and now part of this team. So um, credit goes to these guys. Uh, for pulling this off. Um, I, of course, just um, uh, have built expertise in PowerPoint now. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so all of the mechanical engineering, the software, the firmware that's been written, the electronics, the electrical, uh, you know, the simulations and so on, everything is done uh, in-house by, by this team. So um, credit goes to them. And, and, and these guys come from all parts of Sri Lanka, from all walks of life as well. Uh, the, the furthest guy we have is from uh, Nikavaratiya. He, uh, he travels about seven and a half hours on a Monday morning. He leaves home at um, you know, about 3 a.m. to get to work. Uh, and he goes home on, on Friday evenings. Uh, elephants roam around his backyard. Uh, so uh, you know, we, we, think of, we think of cool projects and we think it's all Colombo or you know, all, you know, this and that, but really, this team is from every part of, uh, of Sri Lanka. So uh, that, that it really shows that if you really wanted to do something new uh, and, and do something novel and, and innovate, uh, the, the limit is endless, uh, and everybody can be part of this process. All right, so quickly, I'm going to go through some slides about in sort of some of the technologies uh, of what we're doing. So. Um, before any of the um, car components are fabricated, everything is modeled in computer. So you can do structural analysis, FEA analysis, um, wind tunnel simulations, uh, aerodynamics, and so on to, uh, to really um, have an industry level, uh, you know, world-class um, design. Uh, and, uh, you know, we talked to a 25-year uh, uh, veteran from uh, Volvo, another Sri Lankan, and and we try to follow the process that Volvo does, and about 99% of their work is also done on the computer uh, first. So every car manufacturer is now moving from doing actual you know, crash testing in, in, in the front of the uh, manufacturing process and really doing all of that on the computer uh, now. So because the simulations are so getting so accurate. Uh, so this is a picture of the surface modeling. Um, we took about six months to get uh, from the drawings to uh, getting a, a, a complete surface modeled uh, CAD, um, a, you know, a class A kind of a, a model. Uh, so this is uh, those initial, uh, you know, um, modeling that we did. Uh, by the way, this design was done by a guy called Dash Gunaratna. He lives in Colombo. He has an automobile um, uh, engineering uh, degree from UK. Uh, and uh, uh, much of the um, world-class standards on uh, automobile design and engineering is, is used. Of course, there are gaps. When we get into certification, we will have to do some modifications. But you know, we are trying to follow as much of the industry standards as possible. All right, so this shows all of our packaging uh, on the top picture, shows all of the, the components that go in the car. Everything is modeled. 
every nut and bolt, every little bracket that gets welded on is modeled first. So you know how the weight distributes, you know how the forces and the, um, you know, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, space that you're uh, talking about. Um, so we have a space frame chassis which you see in the, uh, the black tubular kind of uh, um, uh, shape. And then the body panels will be, be out of carbon fiber. Uh, the whole car weighs about 1,500 kilos, uh, about the weight of a Toyota Prius, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, and it has a six inch clearance. So a common question we get is, um, uh, you know, can you drive this uh, on our roads? Uh, yes, you can, because the Toyota Prius has about five and a half or six inch clearance as well. So if you can drive a Toyota Prius, uh, you should be able to drive this car uh, very easily. Um, and uh, it's a rear wheel drive car. There are two motors. Each motor is connected to a, a rear wheel separately. So there's no mechanical differential. Software will control when you take a curve, um, you know, depending on the speed of the car, the steering angle, uh, you know, how to rotate the two wheels. Because all of us obviously know uh, that when you take a curve, one of the wheels have to turn faster than the other one. So that is all done through a computer. Uh, there'll be about 50 microcontrollers on this car. Uh, there will be a device for IoT. Uh, there will be a touch screen display uh, running uh, maybe a Linux-like kernel. Um, and, and the whole system is integrated using a CAN bus. Uh, but there will be Wi-Fi connectivity and, and remote monitoring uh, capabilities as well. So there is a lot of software that will go on this car. And something that we really uh, you know, want to tell all the software folks is that um, uh, because you will have all of the access to all of the sensors on the vehicle, the actuators, the brakes, accelerator, uh, you can, you know, start writing autonomous navigation code or, you know, uh, accident prevention code or, you know, something smarter than what's available today. Uh, and, and people ask, you know, how could you do it in Sri Lanka, you know, with our roads and so on. But, you know, that's where the innovation comes. And, and I'm sure if we put all our heads together, we can really think about how to, uh, you know, drive this car safely in Colombo. All right, so uh, the, the bottom uh, picture uh, shows um, uh, a 3D scan of the vehicle. We borrowed the uh, high-precision uh, laser scanner from University of Moratua to uh, scan our plug to make sure that it matches our uh, simulated surfaces and, and uh, make sure that the errors are all fixed. All right, so this is picture shows the uh, chassis and the aerodynamic simulations. Again, uh, you know, a lot of things can be done in, in computer now. So uh, the top picture shows the kind of the forces that will be uh, placed on the chassis when you do, uh, you know, curves and high speeds and so on. And the bottom picture shows some of our aerodynamic simulations as well. Um, sorry. So this shows the modeling of our motor controller on top. Uh, there's only about two other motor controllers in the world that we could buy off shelf. Uh, so we, we thought of building our own um, to see, you know, to really get into the technology, to build that expertise so that we can get into other technologies through that. Uh, the motor controller will be rated at 600 volts, uh, running about 600 amps. So it should be able to do about 100 kilowatts of power um, per motor continuously, about 150 kilowatts of power at peak, uh, which roughly uh, converts to about uh, 900 horsepower, available horsepower on the car. We think we should be able to run around 530 horsepower to achieve about those three goals that I talked about. And the bottom picture shows the, the battery module that we are designing as well. All right, so this is a, a real picture. This is our uh, plug, which is a full-scale model of the car. Uh, this was taken about uh, four months ago. We, we have moved uh, much further now. So out of this plug, you build the mold, and then off the mold, you build the body panels out of carbon fiber. So it's a three-step process. The first process of building the mold very accurate, building the plug very accurately is the hardest part, and that's what we are uh, doing right now. All right, so quickly, apart from the car, we are also building electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Um, because this goes in hand in hand with what we're doing and all of the, our technologies that go into the motor controller matches very easily to um, the, uh, the power electronics areas of you know, fast charging. So what you have on the top is the, the, the fast charger that we built uh, for um, Nissan Leafs and so on that adheres to the Chardemo standard. 
And on the bottom, uh, on to the right, is the, uh, it's a called a level two charge. It's a, a slow charger, completely built uh, in Sri Lanka as well. So these are being deployed around the country now. We have about 15 charging units around the country. So uh, if you all, uh, I don't know if somebody owns a Nissan Leaf, but we have what we call a, a, a charge net uh, charging solution. So all of the charges are IoT devices. They are all connected to, to the web using a, a low bandwidth um, connectivity. Um, and uh, with, with, with IoT devices now, it enables us to have a membership system. It enables us to give real-time information about our charges. You know, is, some, if, is it busy? Once you're driving to Candy, you know, what kind of charges do you have on your way there? You know, is somebody charging it? What other uh, charger can you use? You know, these kind of information can be uh, done using this technology. All right, and then we have a mobile application as well that, uh, that gives you, you know, real-time information about the charges and, and where you can get, you know, your vehicle charged. All right, so this video is the first drive of, the, of Vega uh, <clears throat> when we had uh, the, the battery and the motors all um, attached to the, uh, the, the test platform. So this was a big day for us. Uh, this was about one year and uh, eight months of work uh, to, to get to this level. We are able to do about 80 kilometers per hour right now, um, and uh, we are developing the motor controller in stages so that we can break the 100 kilometer hour uh, milestone and, and then move on to our 240 uh, top speed um, <clears throat> goal. So this is the first time we, we ever drove this car uh, using all of our electronics, all of our software. Um, the two motors were brought in from the US, but the, the reduction gearbox that sits in the middle um, and all of the electronics is done locally. And yes, it goes in reverse. <laughs> With electric car, reverse is very easy. You just, uh, you know, it's a, just a software switch. Um, so it has, uh, you know, regular brakes. Uh, brakes are not fancy right now, but the new Audi uh, models have complete electric brakes. There's no hydraulics at all. Uh, all controlled through software. So we want to get into that kind of technology in the near future. Um, and we want, we have built this car so that it's autonomous capable, meaning uh, everything can be controlled through software if needed, uh, you know, if the capability is there, it, it doesn't. So this is the Trace Expert City site. Uh, if you all ever come to visit, uh, just cross the road very carefully. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. So a few more seconds of this video. All right. All right, so I'm now going to call upon uh, Dr. Harsha to come talk to you about, uh, you know, where we want to go from here. Thank you. Okay. Um I don't do any other work, so all what I do is uh, give some kind of vision where we want to go and what we have to do. So we have uh, come so far with this particular car. So I'll give you what you want to do. I think I don't have that much of time. Uh, the first thing is like we thought that, okay, now if we can go, uh, I was asking the guys that we have two motors which do 900 brake horsepower. Then when I went and had a look at uh, the Lamborghini Aventador, uh, it has 600, 600 brake horsepower, and it actually does in 2.9 seconds. And it's about, uh, it's about 1,500, 1,600 kilos of weight. But ours is about 1,500 kilos of weight. We have 900 brake horsepower. So we thought that why can't we do 0 to 60 in about 2.1 seconds, right? So now my, <laughs> so I told all the guys, our ambitious target now has to be changing from 3.6 seconds to become 2.1 seconds, taking the statistics from Lamborghini, right? And the second thing is uh, we will actually now realize that with the electric brakes, we will be able to do uh, the four motors because we get enough space in there. 
And then we realized, why can't we reduce the weight of this particular car? So from 1,500 kilos, if we can reduce to about 1,100 or 1,000 kilos, then we have better chance of having better acceleration. And also to use uh, space grade uh, material. Uh, and also, one of the other things I was telling the guys, the, the most coolest stuff, if we can charge our car in about 10 minutes, right? So we realized if you can have a software configurable battery uh, set where you can do serial and parallel, so it goes to parallel whenever you want to charge it, it goes to serial whenever you want to drive it. So you can reconfigure the batteries uh, using the software uh, rather than just having pre-configured battery set. So we realize it's all possible. So now, uh, in order to do that, if you do a car on 2.1 seconds, then the whole world is going to know there will be a car that's developed in Sri Lanka which runs at 2.1 seconds. So that actually gives us a tremendous boost. And that's the, the ambitious target that we have uh, for the next uh, set of goals that we, we set up today. So then I realized, how am I going to get this car weight reduction? Then I went to, uh, we have a nanotech park, absolutely fabulous place. Uh, so I went and I spoke to all the scientists over there and say, is there any way that you can actually build us a material which can have the strength that we need and also we have uh, the, the flexibility as well as the, the lower of the weight. And then after long discussions with them and they said, okay, there is a possibility that we can actually build a type of polymer that you're asking for. So what you're doing is like they're actually using some kind of peak material that carbon infusion there. And then now at the moment, uh, we are testing and trying it out and we are trying to see whether we could actually make the exact the same shell using the new material. So if you do that, uh, we can actually drastically reduce the weight of the chassis, uh, which will go down to about, I think, go down by 400 kilos. So that's uh, another thing that we're trying to do with the Nanotech Park and utilize uh, some other resources that we have it in Sri Lanka. And Nanotech Park has not actually been known very well uh, around the world uh, about the Sri Lanka Nanotech Park. So we think that by doing these kind of things can uh, give a tremendous boost for them. Uh, the next thing we thought, okay, we can, what if we can, rather than going through that, the plug and the entire model, is there any way that we can actually do 3D printing of all these panels? So all what you had to do is like you have uh, one uh, uh, a chassis, and all what you do is you design your car, and you 3D print your panels, and then fix that one into the car. So this is like kind of a, uh, quite ambitious, uh, but we are trying our best to do that one as well. Uh, the next one is, uh, in, in Sri Lanka, one of the biggest problems that we've seen is in the grid, we can get only about 30 to 40 amps. Now if you have 30 to 40 amps, uh, it'll take a long time to charge up like 100 kilowatts of uh, power. So what if you can store that energy over time in somewhere, as soon as you get the car, then you download all that energy into the car as fast as possible, right? So in, in saying that, we said, okay, why can't you build a kind of a supercapacitor in Sri Lanka where you can do that? Then again, that we went back to Nanotech Park and said that is there any way that you can create us some kind of material where we can actually charge uh, during the, the peak of peak time, those uh, capacitors and discharge back into uh, the cars as fast as possible. So we are actually working on those kind of material and trying to create a, a supercapacitor where we can actually store that kind of energy and then download that energy into a car as soon as the car comes. So that will actually resolve the power problem that we have uh, using the, the, the electric cars as well. And thirdly, uh, as uh, Bishan mentioned, that we have about 50-odd microcontrollers and we have now creating our own API. Uh, and then uh, we also uh, work on some of the drones technology, like autonomous drones. Uh, so those uh, algorithms that we have done on autonomous drones are working now. And those uh, technologies are now become the, uh, the, 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 the most, uh, uh, I think, uh, stable algorithm in the world today. We have few research papers that has been uh, produced under that as well. So we are actually trying to see whether we can actually make the Vega to become autonomous as much as possible. So uh, that's all open to all the, the people, all the software guys, so all the software folks to use our APIs and use the controllers and, and to build autonomous uh, a car. So I think so many other people are already building it. And then we also build the autonomous part of Vega as well. 
And then uh, what we realize is like if you get all that thing done, is there any way that we can go into e-racing or Formula One e-racing? It can be, sounds as crazy as possible, uh, but if you have the right motors, right controllers, right uh, battery packs, and, and then right material and right weight, then why can't we go and do a uh, e-racing on formula, right? So it can be the right time and the right place as well because it's not been started as it, it's all been being starting. Uh, so there's a big possibility that we could actually go into uh, the Formula One as well. So if you can go, uh, as a country like Sri Lanka, never been known before for automobile industry, and ended up in uh, Formula Car, uh, I think that will be the, the coolest thing that somebody can ever do. So that's uh, the, the biggest ambition that uh, we have. So uh, saying that, everybody asks, uh, how did all these things start? Right? So I can actually say that one in so many different ways, but uh, I can simplify the entire thing. Say, like, when you hit the midlife crisis, right, you wanted to have a faster car. Right? When you want a faster car in Sri Lanka, it's extremely expensive. So if you want to drive a Lamborghini, it's going to cost you about 1.1 million. So I thought that, uh, you know, is it possible to spend 1.1 million on a car, or you invest the entire money or building a car, right? So the journey started uh, thinking on that particular line and say, rather than buying a car, let me build a car. So if you build a car, what you can do is like, you probably be able to sell the car, and then you can make sometimes serious amount of money if it all works, right? Or you can sell the technologies and you can make other stuff as well. So finally, you will be able to build a car of your own and the way you like it. But the coolest thing, what I told the richest guy in these countries, if I'm driving a Vega, right, it's under my control whether to sell it to you or not, right? So just imagine the coolest thing is like you go to the richest guy and say that you don't have the Vega, right? So what can they do? You know, I was telling uh, the Emirates uh, president the other day, when you meet the, the sheikh of Dubai, uh, tell him whether he could afford to buy a Vega or not, right? Whether he has a Vega in their car or not. Right? So that's actually a, kind of a, uh, the super cool thing that uh, we started off uh, taking this particular Vega uh, kind of a car into the market. And uh, so what, when we started the Vega, we did not think about market analysis, sort analysis, this analysis, that analysis. We say, okay, let's get on with it. Let's start it. Let's start how it actually goes. And then let's start to fund it as much as possible and see what it takes us from there to the next level, to the next level. So the good thing is like uh, most of the Sri Lankans now, uh, it's, it's kind of a open to every single person. So a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of companies, they want to come there and want to contribute to this. And that way, uh, this has actually become like the, the Sri Lankan car or the Sri Lankan thing, uh, which actually gives a tremendous boost for all the Sri Lankans, uh, not uh, because they, they, they are so keen and some given time we will have so many people turn up in our doorstep and say, you know, is there any way that we can actually contribute to this particular car? Uh, so it is actually happening at the moment. And I think, uh, Hopefully that all our ambitious targets that we can meet and then hopefully this will actually uh, go into a kind of a business model uh, that can actually uh, you know, develop into uh, a massive industry in this particular region because nobody has ever tried it before. And lastly, one of the things that uh, typical question that all the Sri Lankans and anybody ask is uh, why do you really want to develop a, a faster car when you can actually develop a uh, 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 kind of a Maruti or a small Suzuki or something like that. Now the, the, the difference is like, if you want to make a sort of fast moving car, you need a lot of robotics. That costs you a lot of money. Uh, so if you want to make uh, more margin, then you need to make more automation. So to do that automation, it costs you a lot of money to have those robotics and stuff like that. But if you go for a kind of a handmade car, uh, you have a lot of uh, labor or cheap labor available in Sri Lanka. So that way that you can actually make a handmade car and go into a market like Zonda and Konigsen and that kind of a very high market, upmarket car, 
uh, uh, that way that uh, it actually fits the bill of these kind of regions straight away. Once you become successful on a very high-end car, then you can downgrade it, and then you'll already build a reputation, and then you can go to a smaller car as much as you like, and that's the reason that you can see even uh, all the, the Ferraris are downgrading to smaller cars as well now. So, uh, so that's actually answering the question of why you actually did not make an electric tri-show and went to a, uh, a bigger car. So, so that's all we have to say about the Vega, and it's actually keep on moving, and hopefully you guys can see uh, in about a few months the full run of the car. And my rhyme, time is also running out, and I wish you all the best, and I hope that you enjoyed in uh, the WSO2 conference. It's the uh, most admirable, one of the companies that I have. I always take WSO2 as an example for uh, whatever Sanjeev has done from there to give an international momentum. So hopefully, Vega can uh, do some kind of thing to uh, the country and the entire, the entire country as well. Thank you so much. <laughs>